I swear this could be the movie of the year. Really. How's it going, fellas and the files? This is Dominic from Film Overload, the channel where we talk about movies, pop culture, and everything in between. And today, I'm reviewing a movie that has been getting a lot of attention lately, especially at the Golden Globes recently, and that is The Banshees of Inisherin. This is a movie by Martin McDowell, a director that I am somewhat familiar with. Uh, he did three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, and he just released this movie uh, this year, and I just thought I'd give my two cents about this movie. As you can probably already tell by this video's intro, I thought this movie was absolutely fantastic. It is a story about two men whose relationship is abruptly cut off due to one of them um, just simply not liking the other one. And that's all I'm going to say without giving away any spoilers because you really need to watch this movie for yourself. And and because of their relationship being so abruptly cut off, there are consequences and the consequences make up a fantastic, dark, but yet thought-provoking uh, drama comedy that really worked with me. And I thought Martin McDowell really has something special on his hands here. Now, I have to be honest here with you guys. I have not seen any other Martin McDowell uh, film. This is my first film from the director. I have not seen Three Billboards outside Ebby, Missouri, but I am hopefully going to watch that eventually. But from what I've seen from this movie, I think Martin McDowell has a very interesting directing style. He he relies a lot on his characters, and I think he really demonstrates that in The Banshees of Inisherin. Um, I think he creates a world of just interesting, complex characters with a lot of layers and I think this movie really thrives off of the characters and how deep they actually were written and credit to uh, McDowell's writing for this movie uh, he really wrote a couple of really solid main characters for you to kind of sink your teeth into and to really get invested in the story and it, it makes you wonder about their friendship and their relationship as a whole. Now, going back to those characters played wonderfully by Colin Farrell and Brandon Gleeson, I thought Colin Farrell in this movie was absolutely outstanding and totally deserved his Golden Globe nomination for this movie. He shows so many emotions and raw emotions in this movie, and you feel for this guy. He just wants to figure out what did he do so wrong to to have his friendship um and and he really showcases that and you feel for him again you really do and and through the eyes of Colin Farrell and his character you really get an insight to how this movie really flows and how this movie really tells a story about these two men now moving on to Brendan Gleeson who I thought was equally just as good as Colin Farrell. Uh, Gleason really also showcases a lot of emotion, even though he is not as, say, outspoken with those emotions like Farrell. But you know, once in a while, he'll, you know, he'll really get into it in this movie. Um, but Gleason really also really captures you, and you feel for him as well. And, and because of him, you really get this sense of... He wants this to, to to be done with, but it does not stop there. Even the supporting characters in this movie, I thought, were absolutely outstanding. Uh, Carrie Condon, who plays Colin Farrell's character's sister, I thought was simply outstanding and completely deserved her Golden Globe nomination for Best Supporting Actress in a Musical Comedy. She really was the glue to this movie and she really kept Colin Farrell's character in check when it seemed like he was about to go off the deep end. She kind of grounded him in reality and really um, assured him that everything's going to be okay. You know, you have me, you have our house, you have what you need. And she was really kind of like, kind of like the motherly figure in this movie almost uh, uh, to Colin Farrell's 
uh, character. And I thought she was absolutely outstanding as well. And I thought she even had some really charming lines and even made me laugh a couple times with some of the lines that she said throughout the film. So a really strong performance from Carrie Condon as well. However, the star of this movie, in my honest opinion, and who stole the show for me was Barry Keown. Um, Barry Keown in this movie is incredible. And I know I keep saying that word for this movie's review, but I just have to say it. Uh, Barry Keown in this movie is simply outstanding. Um, he plays this broken down young man who just is seeking attention and who is seeking love from others around him because his home situation is awful and he really latches on to Farrell's character and at some points Don Gleason's character and even uh Carrie Condon's character. Um you just feel for this guy and Barry plays this character so well and I really hope the Academy looks at Barry's performance in this movie because I think right now he is the front runner for best supporting actor in my honest opinion. And I thought he stole the show in this movie and without him I don't think this movie would have had the gut punch factor that it really left me so kudos to Barry Keown for just putting in a fantastic performance and a very memorable performance from this year and I could not get enough of the small little remote town that this movie takes place in. it really had a community kind of feeling to it which really made the story even more interesting it just kind of had this this feeling of tight knit very like community like and i thought the way it was handled and the way it was it was shot i thought the movie really had this nice um connection with not only uh, the main characters, but the supporting characters and even the extras, you know, all the extra characters that had like a line or two. I thought it really had this community kind of feel to it, which only makes the story that more engaging. So kudos to McDowell and his team for really uh, creating that atmosphere of tension and despair and division that this movie greatly thrives off of. Overall, The Banshees of Inishirun, in my opinion, is one of the year's best films. And on my personal list from this year, it is definitely up there with the likings of The Northman and Top Gun Maverick. I thought this movie was a great little piece of cinema. I thought it was really engaging. And the way uh, Martin McDowell presents his story is just simply amazing through the characters, through the writing, through the directing, through everything. So this is a really solid movie. It's on HBO Max now. So if you have access to HBO Max, it is on there. And I encourage you guys to watch this movie uh, before the award season really starts kicking off because I think it is something truly special. If you liked what you saw here today, please be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications so that you can get notified every single time I post a video. You can follow me also on Letterboxd, which is right here. I post all of my movie reviews on Letterboxd. I absolutely love using this app as it helps me keep in line everything that I watch and helps me keep track of everything. And I think that you guys would actually really benefit from this app if you are indeed cinema lovers like myself. As always, guys, happy movie watching. Take care.